Now, local optimization is about classifying the local maximum and minima of a function, so the local extrema. And like we discussed before, using Fermat theorem, we try to find critical points. Critical points of a function, so the stationary points, or the points where the derivative does not exist. And uh, we study for signs of the derivative function. Yeah, because we studied for the mean value theorem, and by the sign of the derivative, we can say a lot about the function, whether it inc increases or decreases. Or suppose we have a stationary point, C, where the derivative is zero. And suppose on the left-hand side, left-hand side from C, we see a negative sign of the derivative, and on the right-hand side we see a positive sign. Then we know that the function on the left-hand side of C is decreasing, and on the right-hand side it increases. Yeah, this is a result of the mean value theorem. And you can see that from the left-hand side the function decreases and increases afterwards C, then the this fc should be a local minimum. Yeah, and it could be that fc is even a global minimum, but at least it's a, it's a local minimum. Yeah, something similar we get when the, the sign of the deriv derivative is reversed. So suppose we have a c that is stationary, yeah, so the deri derivative is 0 at C, and suppose the function increases to C and decreases afterwards, then we see that FC is a local maximum of the function. Yeah, if we just close to C, we see a kind of top of a mountain, so that FC is a local maximum. I will now turn to the second order condition that makes sure whether or not we have a minimum or a maximum so that we can identify which of, which is the case. So suppose we have a stationary point where the derivative is zero. So at C we have a zero derivative. And suppose that the second order derivative at C is larger than zero. Well, what does it mean? It means that if we're close enough to C, and on the left-hand side we have a negative sign of the derivative, and it goes through the zero on the right-hand side, we get a positive sign. So from the fact that the second derivative in C is larger than zero, it means that if we're close enough to C on the left-hand side, we see F decreasing, and on the right-hand side, close enough to C, we see that F is increasing. So that FC is a minimum. Yeah, so this is also called the second-order condition. So if the second-order derivative is larger than zero for a stationary point, we get a minimum. And in particular, we get that the stationary points of convex functions, a convex function has a uh, um, strictly convex functions have always positive second derivatives, then we don't need to look further. We all already know that this is a minimum location. Yeah. Okay, the other condition is that when the we know in a forest stationary point that the second derivative is smaller than zero, this means that locally f prime is could be increasing so on the left hand or decreasing so on the left hand side close to c it has a positive sign and close to c on the right hand side there's a negative sign which means that the function increases towards c and afterwards it decreases and from this picture we read that the fc now is a maximum yeah, so the stationary points of concave functions, well, concave functions are, and in particular the functions where we know that the 
second order derivative is smaller than zero on some interval, then we know that this function is concave, then if we find a stationary point, then we know that this is a maximum location. And so these are clear. First we try to solve for critical points, then we have the first order condition for optimization. So uh, the second order condition, uh, we need to check whether or not uh, uh, the stationary points involve minimum or maximum values. And even so, it may be the case that it's neither a maximum nor a minimum.